So you want to get better photos on your travels, whether it's a beach holiday, family holiday, or you just want a cheeky little seated break somewhere. Well, I'm here to meet professional content creator, Harrison Brown. He's going to teach us exactly how to do that. Well, let's go find him. So my name's Harrison Brown, photographer and videographer from Scotland. So I'm a hybrid shooter and I specialize in travel. So I'm 25, I've been doing it for about seven years and it gets better every year. Very long time and uh, beautiful location here. What are we doing here? So when you go on holiday, the first thing you want to do is capture the landscape. So we're going to be beginning with beginner photography and how you can use the rule of thirds, how you can location scout to try and get that perfect landscape and try and capture the moment, so to speak. Amazing. It sounds like we're going to be learning a lot today. So uh, grab your camera, grab your notepads and uh, let's get on with it. So travel photography, how did you begin to document your travels and mainly how did you get into it? When I was younger, I used to go on city breaks or, or family escapes to the wild and I used to want to capture the essence of the place we were in, in one photo. Literally, that's how it started. So it started with a little digital camera and from then it just progressed and progressed and now I have far too many cameras. <laughs> nice. What's, what's the earliest memory of what you captured? I was at Edinburgh Zoo and there was a peacock and I managed to get it without the cage in the background. This is such a weird thing to say. <laughs> but because there was no cage in the background, it looked like it was in the wild. Then after that, I wanted to go into wildlife photography. <laughs> so there's so many different niches you can go down, especially when you travel. I mean, there's there are goats to our left, there's sheep to the right, there's mountains over here. You can go down any avenue that you want. And that's what kind of why I love to travel. How do you plan what you're going to shoot for the day? How do you plan your, your day? I would try not to plan. I would try enjoying the process, enjoying getting outdoors, exploring the wilderness like we are in Scotland at the moment. I think if you start thinking too much about the photography at the start, it can get a bit sort of sluggish and you might not be as enthusiastic about it anymore. Whereas if you truly love to travel and then the photography comes later, then you'll keep doing it. So you've arrived at a location like this. How do you begin to plan the exact location and where you're gonna shoot and stuff like that? What do you do? So there's a couple things you could do. One is literally ask locals. Find someone with a camera and say, listen, I loved your camera, what camera do you have? Where are the best locations to shoot? And they will know the best locations to shoot. Or you get on a Facebook forum, that kind of helps. Or Instagram DMs, put up a story. Or what I love to do is literally just walk around, walk up a hill, do a hike. Don't plan for the photo to come along, but if it comes along, you know it'll be unique to you because you've stumbled on that location. Next thing I wanna do is learn about how do you begin to take these shots? How do you set up to actually get those fantastic images? Absolutely, let's do it. Let's get into the kit. Uh, what kind of kit do we need to get started? So what I've got in my hand today, and by the way, Weather in Scotland is a bit unpredictable. <laughs> this isn't weather soon, so I'll need to put it away in a sec, but it is the Canon EOS R10. And the lens that I've got in this is the 18 to 150 F4. So that gives you a really good range so that you can get those detailed shots, but you can also get the white landscape like we're in today. Could you describe what we're looking at here and what we're going to be getting? You've got this iconic white house that everyone goes to, everyone shoots. Mm -hmm. And there's a reason for that. It's absolutely beautiful. The mountains in the background, you've got a waterfall coming down. And to top it all off, you've got the reflection on the lake. And that's what we'll be shooting today. We'll, try, we'll be trying to cram as much as possible in. Now, a portrait would work really well here because you'll capture that reflection and also the mountains and also a landscape because you'll capture a lot more of the mountains and that little white house as well. How important is composition when taking this shot? I think it's very important. I think that uh, if you skew this too far to the right, it'll just look off balance. It won't be a nice image to look at and it won't draw the eye. But if you use the rule of thirds and have it weighted with this house to the bottom right and the mountains to the top left, you'll have a really nice aesthetically appealing image. What kind of focal? Focal distance? Yeah, yeah, focal we're gonna length. be using it, yeah. I think that I'll go with around about 18. I'll go with the, the very uh, minimum that this can do because I want to capture everything in the surroundings. I want to capture that white house, but I also want that mountain in the background. And because it's so bright and because we want everything in focus at the moment, we're gonna have quite a high F-stop. I, I might go for sort of 
11 to 13 and then I'll try and keep my sh shutter around 250 or 400 to compensate and try if I can to keep my ISO at 400 to retain as much detail as possible. With all that said, we see lights changing on and off like you said, like you know, the sun's out, it might go back in again. How are you compensating for that when it comes to the settings and light? You can do it in a couple of different ways. I think that the f-stop comes into that massively depending on how uh, much light you're letting into the lens. So if it's a darker setting you want a lower f-stop or if it's lighter like today, you definitely want a higher f-stop to comp compensate for that. Another way of doing it is shutter speed. So if you're shooting, for example, wildlife photography or the ripples that are going through this water at the moment, you might want a higher shutter to get that precise detail and so that there's no blur. I was shooting autofocus, manual focus. Always auto, also auto focus. I think okay. as a beginner, you definitely start with auto. Now, I'm not just saying this, but Canon's autofocus is the best in the industry, in my opinion. Okay. So I think that in terms of autofocus, can't go wrong. And this system you've got here, are there any other benefits that that offers you as a beginner? Yeah, absolutely. I think the flip out screen um, is definitely a huge benefit. I think especially when you're at the weird angles that we're at right now, you can grab onto your camera, not lose it, <laughs> and use that screen in the meantime. Um, and that's what we're doing here. How do you make sure you get the perfect shot? So I think that goes back to the image that you had at the beginning. What did you want to capture or what did you want to portray with the photo? Sometimes you don't get the photo that you came out for, but you get a photo that's damn near close or it portrays the right thing. It tells the right story. And I think that's when you know you've got the right photo. So have a look at what you got. So as you can see here, you've got this beautiful reflection and we're putting the rule of thirds to good use keeping it in the bottom right corner. Mm. We've also got the top left, we've got a bit of sun flare coming in and to spice up, we've got some leading lines just running in to lead your eye towards the cottage. And everything's pretty well exposed. We could edit it a little bit, but it looks pretty good. That looks fantastic. Thank you so much for this, Harrison. I think we've learned so much as a beginner here, including camera settings, your lens setup, composition, and so much more. Are there anything else you can take away? Any more tips and tricks? I think just enjoy your travels. And I think wherever you go, there's always going to be a photo opportunity around the corner. For example, we're in Glencoe at the moment. We're literally 20 meters from a main road and you have this beautiful site behind you. So capture everything you can, look for the opportunity. Well, that's it guys for this episode. I hope you've uh, taken a thing or two away from this one. And uh, make sure you subscribe for more videos in the Canon Learning Series. Mm -hmm.